point truth. Our swords are, are, are dull on one side. And we need to sharpen our swords with both sides. Hey guys, I hope you're doing amazing. Uh, today I just want to speak about th this thing God just, just placed in my heart so, so, so badly last night when I, when I was doing, reading my word and, and the Bible and, and just getting in there. And, and the Lord, He just opened up. I was, I was reading Proverbs 9 and the Lord just spoke to me through and He said, PD, there are, there are people there out there who are Christians. There are people there who, they, they profess they're Christians. They, they, they have a sense of religiousness. They have a sense of knowing me. They, they do things and they, it seems that they know me when other people look at them even. But but there's something missing. There's something deeper missing. And and when I read, I want to read to you Proverbs nine, and it's it's all about wisdom. It's all about um, he. Proverbs nine talks about these two two types of of people, and and the one is called wisdom, and the other one is called foolishness. So I want to read to you Proverbs nine verse one. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out her young woman to call from the highest places in town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. Whoever to him who lacks sense, she says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine that I have mixed. This is wisdom speaking. Leave your simple ways and live and walk the ways of insight. All right, so I want to continue. I want to skip to verse 13. The woman of folly is loud. Okay, we, we spoke about the woman of wisdom, now we're speaking about the wisdom, wisdom, woman of folly. She's seductive and knows nothing. She sits at the door, uh, door of her house. She takes a seat of the high, highest places in town, calling to those who pass by who are going straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And to him who lacks sense, she says, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Where are you getting your nourishment? Are you getting your nourishment from stolen water? Or are you getting your nourishment from, from the word, from the word, the nourishment, the bread of life? Are you getting your, your nourishment from the truth? See, um, the, the, and God, he started speaking to me, he said, listen, my, the, the sword of the spirit, my people don't have it. And I was like, Lord, what is the sword of the spirit? What are you speaking about? No, no. And he, he opened the word to me and he was speaking through Hebrews 4 verse 12. And he said, no, there's a sword. And, but my people, their swords are only sharper one side. See, your sword is, and, and the two edges of the sword, which, which are sharp and represents the one, the two parts of the word. See, we've got the New and the Old Testament, and, and our people, the, God's people, their, their swords are sharp on the one side, but they're not sharp on both. We're either a type of person, we're in the Old Testament, and we, we know the stuff of the Old Testament, and we have the knowledge, and that's amazing, and we're doing the things, and we're in truth, or we're only in the New Testament, and we're doing the things of the Spirit, we, we pray for the sick, we do all these things, but we don't have have the foundation that the Old Testament brings. If we're in the New Testament and we don't have any foundation of the Old Testament, we're in big trouble. We're not, we're not going to be able to step in alignment with the Word and 100% truth. Our swords are, are, are dull on one side and we need to sharpen our swords with both, both sides. See, the, the Word says the, beginning, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And he brings insight. See, the, the, the word he, I just read about the two women. I was speaking about the women of wisdom and the women of foolishness. See, we, are, we have simple Christians today. Christians who, they just go to church and they do all these things, but they don't have the death. So when the women, when, so we have a lot of stuff going on in this world. We've got a lot of knowledge going on in the internet. We've got a lot of places to get knowledge. We've got, so if you are not grounded, and you don't get your nourishment from God, if you get your nourishment from your pastor, then you're gonna go and you're gonna just look for what sounds good to your ear. You're gonna go look for what tastes good to you instead of going for the nourishment which is good and healthy for your body, for your spirit. See, we, 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 we think that being lukewarm is enough. We think that being, just being like, oh yeah, I love God, I love Jesus, it's my grace, PD, leave me alone. No, listen, uh, God says that if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. I want to tell you about Luke 14. Um, this is when, and, 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 and it, it speaks about, it kind of speaks about the church because Jesus was, um, this is a large crowd were following Jesus and large people were coming and they were hearing about the miracles, they were hearing about all these things. And um, what followed was this, I want to read to you Luke, Luke 14 verse 25. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, so you've got all these large crowds coming, they're hearing about the miracles and they're coming and they're following Jesus and he, say, he told them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes even their own life, 
such a person cannot be my disciple. Whoa, how, 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 what does he even mean by that? I mean, and he then says, and who, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Now listen, listen, when we, when we go to church, is this what we hear? See, the, when, when, when Jesus, when all these people were following him, he became skeptical. He became so skeptical of all these people coming and he told them, listen, whoever is willing to lay down their life, whoever is willing to give up their wife, their children, their brothers, their sisters, their family, you can stay, you can come, you can follow me. The rest of you, you can go because you're not worthy to be my disciple. That is what he said. Guys, that is incredible. I, I don't even know if I would, would, would you... Would you give up your family? Would you give up your brothers and sisters? Would you give up your wife, your children for Him? Is He so valuable to you? Is it the nourishment that He gives so valuable to you that you would do that for Him? I want to read, I want to read further in Revelation 3.15 I know your deeds that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich, I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich and white, clo and, and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness and solve, and solve to put, put on your, solve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those who are rebuke are rebuke and discipline, to be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Guys, that is incredible. So I want to ask you, are you hot or cold or, or, or which are you? And you know, I was, I was asking, I was like, but Lord, I mean, if someone, if someone is just a believer, at least they believe, even if they're not living it out all the way, at least they believe. So, you know, what's the problem? No, PD, the problem is, is that they destroy my people. They destroy, when you are a half, when you're doing this thing halfway, when you do, when Jesus is your little hobby and you do this thing just with a, a piece of you, what happens is you stop walking in hypocrisy. You start walking in a place of, oh yeah, but it's, but you know, um, oh, that was back then the, you know I read this thing in the Bible and, and I've got this conviction but it, that was part of their culture it's not for today anymore you know it's not that important anymore and you know then you walk out a hypocrisy a life of hypocrisy and and you say I'm a Christian I'm a Christian and then atheists see you um, unbelievers see you even other Christians see you and you hurt them and you tell and they think this is what Jesus walks like L guys we are we are one of the biggest reasons that there are so many atheists walking around today and that is deep, man. And I want to, I just want to cry when I say that, man. Because I'm part of that, man. I was, like, I was the biggest hypocrite in my life. You know, I was the biggest hypocrite until God told, told me, listen, Peter, you're on fire or you're nothing. You're, you're, either, you're either willing to lay your life down, lay everything down you have for me, or you cannot be my disciple. Listen, going to church, playing church is not enough anymore. I love church. I, I go to church. But just going to churches does not save you. A prayer does not save you. So only one thing saves you, and His name is Yeshua, Jesus Christ, whose name means salvation. You, salvation is a person. Salvation is not a ritual. It's not a prayer. It's not a, a, a nice thought. It's not a it's not a good feeling It is a person and it is laying your cross down for him. It's nothing less or more than that. That is what it is It's it's being able if Listen, we we let me ask you this. Let me ask you this friend brother If your church today was to announce that they're not going to um, Then they're selling their building and they're gonna start having their church in a field what would you do, your buddy on the on the shoulder, and say, "Oh, brother, you know, um, uh, I don't know. I don't. I mean, they're selling the church. This is crazy, man. Why would I, man? Let's go to this church in the next door. They've got nice air cons. They've got uh, all these things. You know, would you would you leave your church? Would you stop going to church when they change the times? When someone hurts you in church, do you stop going to church? Because if that's the reason, then you're not going to church for Christ. If if you were going to church for Christ and you were a follower of Christ, the one who says, the one who says, um, you need to, if you would, you should be able to reject your mother, brother, sister, family to follow me. If that is your Christ, you would sit there even though a brother doesn't like you, even though you don't like a brother in that church. You would sit there because you're not there for the church or there for Christ because you're a follower of Christ. I want to read to you 2 Timothy 4 verse 3. 
For the time will come when people will, will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desire, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. And, and, and that's what we see today. We see a lot of people, they say, oh, well, look at this church. They've got a lot of numbers. They've got a lot, they've, it's, a, it's a big building. And I'm not against big churches, but we've got a lot of people and they say, oh, look at this church. It's a big building. It's a big thing. All these things. Um, let me go there because they must have truth. F friend, Jesus, when the crowd started following him, he became skeptical and he said, listen, this is the conditions. You lay everything down, then you stay. But see, we've got churches, some churches, we've got people, we've got pastors who say things for the people what their itching ears want to hear. See, and, and it's not because of, it's not, it's, they're getting a lot of followers, not because of just about how they preach and whatever. It's because the people want to hear what they want to hear. They want to satisfy their flesh. Does your church satisfy your flesh or does it satisfy your spirit? Are you getting, getting nourishment for your spirit or are you going there or, and, and just eating stolen food and, and drinking poisonous water? Friend, the only way you're going to know is if you get in this word, if you get in the word of God and not depend on your pastor to feed you. Your pastor is not there to feed you, your pastor is there to, to give, your, give light on the word. The, you should go to church fed, go to church ready, go to church able to give not there to and yes we receive a church as well but if if you go to church to to get to so that you can just get this little the next piece of bread so you can last another week and just get a sunday again and just get another piece of bread and then we get, like why are you going to church what is your reason because guys god is calling disciples he's calling people that is going to lay down everything they've got and if he's saying you should be willing down willing to lay down your 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 life your cross your wife your children all these things what about your time are you laying down your time for the lord god i know this is guys i'm not i'm not even just speaking to you i'm speaking to myself as well and 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 this, this convicted me so much when the Lord revealed this to me. It convicted me so much to just be like, Lord, how can I even think to worry about where you're taking me? Because in the mere act of worrying where, what's going on in my life and where you're taking me, I'm demonstrating an immense amount of disbelief in what you're doing in my life. I'm, 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 I'm not believing that you can feed me. The, the word says if you set the kingdom of God in front above everything else, he will never let you go hungry. That's a promise, guys. That's he says he will feed even though he feeds the birds in the air. How much more when he feed us? So why are we even worried? And then we're not even worried about food. We're worried about getting, getting parking, about being on time. We're worried about what the people at our church think of us. We're worried about what this guy on the internet says about us or thinks about us. Or we're worried about what people think if we preach right. We be, guys, if you're in the word. And you're praying, and you're and you've got the, you're holding on. You've got both edges of your swords, uh, both edges of your sword. All the New Testament. If you're in both of them, and not just sugarcoating the one or the other, or, or or turning over the one or the other, but you're in both of them, and you're 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 realizing, and you're you're studying it, and you're like, Lord, what do you want me to do? How should I do this? Lord, this is weird. I don't understand all of it, but I want to know. I want to follow you. I want to have you with all I've got. I want every piece of you, even if it means laying down my life, even if it means I sleep on the street tomorrow, even if it means I lose everything including my wife and, and, and family now now friends that's what it takes to be a Christian that's what it is it's not about it, we're, it's not about playing games we've got we've got people in China millions of people they have underground churches where they worship for 24 hours straight and read the Bible straight and we are complaining about an hour sitting in church guys if you're complaining about an hour in church are you a disciple of Christ are you a disciple of Christ or, or are you just or are you sitting there to satisfy yourself to just feel better for the next Sunday or are you there because you have you are sold out to the Christ you are sold out to your father and you are seeking him relentlessly you're not looking into this life anymore you're not looking into what on to, into materialistic things anymore you're not looking into you know what, what we've got here anymore but you're looking past this and you're looking past the temporary and you're looking into where God is taking you're looking you've got a perspective of eternity you've got a perspective of brother brother you're not seeing this right now but I love you and I'm gonna tell you the truth even if it hurts you even if you don't understand it right now because I need to tell you because if you don't understand it your eternity is on it's on the stake this is not just a thing about dying tomorrow it's the thing of going to hell I want to ask you will you will you go and, and if, if your if your church was was gonna be your built church building was gonna be sold tomorrow 
and, and, and there was church and there was a storm outside, a storm raining outside, would you go and meet with your pastor in the storm? Or would you rather stay at home because it's going to be too wet? It's going to be too uncomfortable. But why? Then a lot of you would, a lot of people would, they would not pitch up. But they would pitch up for their favorite concert, their favorite music, their favorite secular artist. They would stand in the rain and worship that guy. Guys, who are we worshiping? Who are, who is, who is our Lord? Because the only thing that's supposed to be priority in our life is God. The only thing. Man, it's God, then it's God, then it's God, then it's God. That is it. That is it. There's nothing. It's, that's how it is. You know, and a lot of people say, yeah, no, you've got God, and then you've got your family, and then you've got... No, 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 no. It's God, then it's God, it's God, it's God. And if, if that is your focus, then God is going to care for your family because He is so able to. He is so able to, and He wants to, and He loves you, your family even more than you do. Why would He not take care of them? Let your priority be God, then God, then God, then God. May this bless you. I just, I just, friend, may just bless you. May this, may this, may Lord shine His light upon you. May He be gracious to you, and may He reveal to you the depths of His word and truth. 